more extreme storms, which then cause erosion problems. We have more dust, which can create some respiratory problems. Heat stress on the animal will affect their production. The soils are uncomfortable, and so they just don't perform as well. Agricultural production is at the mercy of weather and climate. Adequate rainfall and ideal temperatures result in good crop production, productive pastures, and healthy animals. But when precipitation patterns or temperatures fall out of the normal range, both crops and livestock are impacted. My name is David Schmidt and I'm an agricultural engineer at the University of Minnesota and the regional coordinator for the Animal Agriculture in a Changing Climate project. Climate is not constant and climate conditions have always and will continue to impact agriculture. Most of us can identify with the challenges of a long drought, a big flood, extreme heat, or extreme cold on animal production. Sometimes death loss or property loss is inevitable, but there are other more subtle impacts that occur with only slight changes in climate and weather. These changes in milk production, animal health, or feed efficiency can also result in significant economic losses. Reducing these impacts requires three things. Understanding local, regional, national, and international climate trends, identifying farm-specific vulnerabilities to these trends, and making strategic changes on the farm to minimize these impacts. This lecture presents an overview of some of the climate impacts, but more importantly, describes a systematic approach to identifying the impacts or assessing farm vulnerability to these climate changes. The best way to identify climate impacts on the farm is through a farm climate impacts audit. An audit is a systematic approach to evaluating a process or system to identify weaknesses. This lesson will take you through some of the key elements to be evaluated by a farm climate impacts audit. Those elements include farm inputs, animal production, logistics, and farm exports. The elements may differ from farm to farm, and so the audit should be conducted with the understanding that each individual farm is unique, and any audit may divert from the systematic approach. The farm inputs most affected by climate impacts are feed and forage. The impacts can be related to seasonal changes in temperature or rainfall, or by extreme events such as drought and flooding. These impacts can affect both the quantity and the quality of feed and forage. The effects can be seen in row crops, forages, or in pastures. Climate trends are indicating a longer growing season. This, along with seasonal temperature and rainfall trends, will impact the productivity of the fields. Pests, weeds, and diseases also can follow temperature and precipitation patterns which can negatively impact feed and forage production. Farmers and agriculture professionals from around the world can attest to the impacts of climate on feed and forage. One of the challenges on many dairy farms is weather patterns and harvest windows. You know, if you need, let's say you need a four day window to harvest a high quality forage and it's gonna rain every two days, then even though he knows what he needs, mother nature says sometimes it interferes. So I think a lot of it comes back to the climate change, the weather, those patterns and so on. But again, if you look at data, forage quality now versus 20 years ago is a lot better. We're making improvements, we just have to keep moving. When you have a situation where animal numbers are reasonably high as they were because they built up over a couple of wet years and you get a sudden drought that's quite right, widespread, you have limited capacity to maintain those animals with feed because they rely on um, natural native grasses. The, um, the production of grain for feeding is reduced. Animal feed often comes from off-farm sources. Farmers should be aware of how vulnerable these off-farm sources are to climate changes. Crop failure on a large scale might make an individual farm vulnerable to short or long-term increases in the price of feed. Another farm input that animal agriculture cannot survive without is water. 
whether it's water for growing feed or water for the animals to drink. This water may come from groundwater aquifers, rain-fed streams, rivers, lakes or ponds, or snowmelt. The availability and quality of water on a farm may be affected by seasonal variations in climate. Questions to ask are, where does the water come from for your farm, and how will your farm be impacted by any changes to this supply? Predictability, availability, and timing are critical. Climate and weather also play a role in farm inputs of energy, both electricity and diesel fuel. Backup generators are status quo on most farms, and in areas where there are more intense rains or storms, generators are even more important. On a national scale, fuel supply and fuel prices are impacted by tropical weather events. So energy inputs to the farm are vulnerable not only to the energy supply, but also to changes in price, both short and long term. While the impacts of climate on farm inputs are clear, the most critical impacts of climate on animal agriculture are seen in animal production. Heat stress has always impacted animal production, so any increased frequency of warmer temperatures or more humid conditions can result in additional challenges. According to a study by St. Pierre in 2003, the beef, swine, dairy and poultry industries were losing $2.4 billion per year due to the impacts of heat stress. These impacts included decreased animal performance, increased mortality, and decreased reproduction. Heat stress can have a critical impact on several different types of farm animals, and the effects can vary by species. Farmers and animal scientists are all well aware of some of these impacts. When somebody tells me they don't get heat stress, usually I ask them, do you lose any milk production in the summer? Normally they say yes, so that tells me they have heat stress. There's a lot of different um, changes that will occur on the animals, so some impacts on such as milk production will drop by 5 to 25 percent, depending on the dairy and, and what kind of cooling technology, etc., that they have. So milk production is the obvious one that a lot of producers will see, but the one that's sometimes forgotten about and is even bigger is reproduction, because we'll see drops of, uh, f you know, 30 to 75 percent on some of these dairies drops in reproduction because we've genetically made this animal to produce milk and so that's where she diverts her energy and resources after typical body maintenance and so reproduction is going to be the last way to come obviously mother nature you're not going to try to sustain an embryo if you can't sustain your yourself or the milk production that you was bred to do so reproduction takes an even larger hit and even at possibly earlier temperatures than what milk production will but those are production losses wise, but then you'll see behavioral changes with animals starting to pant more, um, breathing more often, uh, salivating more. Um, they'll stand up and try to get more airflow across them, so you'll see a lot more animals standing. The extremes would be mortality. The extremes, because pigs don't sweat, so they, they get really hot. Um, but the biggest is they're not going to eat, they're not going to gain. So average daily gain is the biggest thing that it affects. Yeah, so we're seeing uh, season in, seasonal infertility with conception, so we actually uh, overbreed in the summertime to make up for that. The sow's uh, thermal neutral zone is at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and so anytime she starts to get above those temperatures, she's going to start to feel heat stress, and there's probably variation among sows as to where they really start to feel the effects of that, but the further you get above, at 65 degrees, the more heat stress they feel. So a sow at 70 is going to feel maybe a little uncomfortable, maybe her respiration rate will increase a little bit. When it gets to 80, it's going to be even more uncomfortable. It gets to 90, it's going to get just miserable. And so it's just a matter of degree. And to say, it, technically, once she's outside her thermal neutral zone, she's heat stressed, but it's a matter of degree. Uh, if humidities are really high, you have uh, the heat loss becomes more inefficient, so they have to work harder to try to um, get rid of that extra heat. Panting, the birds use energy. They have to generate energy to be able to do that panting because that's all done with, with muscular contraction. And so the more they have to pant, the longer they have to pant, uh, the more energy they're using, uh, the more you can get 
um, byproducts of, of the energy metabolism built up that's going to take and affect the acid base balance. And then that will have a negative impact on the bird in terms of how long it can actually take and be able to control its body temperature before it starts to increase and reaches a lethal stage. So, so assuming we're not talking about lethal temperatures, you know, that the birds are able to take and control their body temperature, it takes energy for them to be able to do that. So they're spending, they're spending their feed energy in terms of trying to keep up with this panting process. Yeah, and then the feed intake will decrease. So, so depending upon where you are on that response curve, um, you'll see some decreased feed intake. Um, and then you'll see uh, actually a worsening of the feed conversion or feed efficiency because again they're using using feed energy more for uh, maintenance of, of uh, body temperature and then eventually over time the you know the, the rate of gain will take and decrease as well instead of um, body weight gain that we're looking for in what we call the market or the meat birds here we're looking at what happens in terms of egg production and fertility and hatchability so warmer temperatures, um, similar to other birds, again, will cause them to decrease their feed intake. And then that can have an impact on, on egg production. Another part of it is if they are spending a lot of time panting, that's going to shift the acid-base balance. And then that will have an impact on uh, calcium, de calcium deposition on the shell. And so you'll end up actually with thinner egg shells. Um, so you have some eggshell quality problems. That would be very similar to what happens with chicken layers as well. Uh, those pr producing table eggs for, for human consumption. The most common impacts of heat stress on animals are loss in productivity and reproductive problems. These impacts can vary depending on the type of species and their different phases of production. Impacts are also a function of the duration of the heat event and the ability of the animals to cool down in the evening. If temperatures do not fall enough during the night, the animals cannot cool down. A species and production specific temperature humidity index can help alert farmers to potential heat stress impacts. The impacts of heat stress on production are captured by seasonal production numbers. For example, in recent years, swine producers in Iowa have reported 3 to 4 percent reductions in slaughter weights during the summer months each year. Milk production per cow is affected by many factors, but the annual cycles are quite evident with an estimated 5 to 10 pounds of milk per day lost due to heat stress in late summer and fall. Along with heat stress, animals can also be impacted by cold. South Dakota's livestock industry took a major hit in 2013 when an autumn snowstorm killed tens of thousands of cattle. Animals in ravines and pastures where they froze to death and many more could die in the months to come. Animals are also affected by abrupt changes from cool temperatures to warmer temperatures. Animals need time to adapt to changes in weather. Farmers need to ask, how vulnerable is the farm to early high season temperatures? Climate changes can also impact the spread of diseases and pests. Warmer temperatures, mild winters, and changing rainfall amounts result in the migration of pests to different geographical areas. Farmers need to ask, how vulnerable is the farm to the spread of new diseases or pests? If we don't have the freeze to, to kill the bacteria, to kill the pathogens, we're going to have more problems with um, parasites and other, other illnesses. I'm beginning to see more cases, and I think this is true of my other, you know, fellow producers, seeing more cases of respiratory illnesses, which that was almost unheard of, you know, at least in my experience with animals on pasture that just, you know, unless they were stressed for some other reason, um, we just didn't see it. But now we're starting to see um, things such as you know, um, respiratory disease and animals in some cases dying. I've been fortunate. I haven't lost any from respiratory disease, but I have a lot of colleagues who have lost animals from respiratory disease. Last year we had a, a bout of pink eye, which I have not seen pink eye um, happen in the, the herd for probably 25 years. Last year we had a very, um, very serious strain come through and affected a lot of animals. And again, just something new that we've never had before, but again, is the result 
of the warm temperatures, the dust, the flies, all of that. After looking at the impacts of climate on farm inputs and on animal production, it's important to examine the impacts on farm logistics, which are quite complex. Logistics include the timing and transporting of young animals, feed, and supplies to the farm, the feeding of animals, the scheduling of reproduction, animal movement through phases of production, manure management, milking equipment and schedules, farm maintenance, and more. Again, the farmer must determine how vulnerable these systems are to climate. Manure management is one area of farm logistics that becomes more complicated as a result of extreme weather events. The additional rainfall that we're getting is, happens in, in, the, in the spring and in the winter. Mm -hmm. And of course that's, you know, that's your critical period for the storage because over the winter you're storing it and then now comes spring, you've got to spread it. And if it's wet, everything's delayed and yeah, so you're storing more for a longer period of time when it's even wetter, so it, it just compounds on you. Changes in the amount, timing, and intensity of rainfall all put farmers at risk for overtopping manure storages. When it comes to manure application, changes in precipitation can create logistics problems with either the timing of the application or with the increased potential for runoff and pollution problems. In addition, any changes in temperature will make it more difficult to estimate crop nutrient availability. Climate changes also impact pasture management. Some grazing areas may not be available due to flooding or drought conditions. On the other end of the spectrum, in the wintertime, we're seeing um, milder winters. Even though the temperatures are milder we have, and we have less snow, we're seeing more precipitation and so we're getting more mud. And the mud um, creates problems in itself with um, um, not only just being, you know, physically just, you know, messy to work with, but also um, they're more apt to be hoof problems. Farms might also be vulnerable to flooded roads or bridges, which makes transporting animals or products on or off the farm more challenging. Ask the dairy farmers near Buffalo, New York, how prepared they were for an early season blizzard in 2014 that brought up to eight feet of snow in the western part of the state. The snow prevented milk trucks from reaching the local dairies, and some farmers were forced to dump milk. Times of extreme heat or cold not only affect the animals, but the human labor on the farm. Flooding or heavy snowfall might prevent farm employees from getting to work. Often these logistical considerations are missed when thinking about climate impacts. Climate and weather challenges to animal production are only part of the farm economic picture. Farmers need to also assess the impacts of climate on farm exports, meaning the products that are marketed and sold by the farm. The market prices for these products are impacted by many factors, including climate conditions on a local, national, or global scale. Cattle ranchers have no choice but to thin their herds. For example, livestock producers have seen their profits affected in recent years due to the impacts of drought. And that's traditionally what we've done in drought managers. We wait for it to become dry, and then we have a whole suite of actions we typically undertake. We try to sell animals, we try to buy feed, look at additional resources for those animals, and we're caught in a time where everybody else is doing the same thing. So price of animals decline, price of feed increases, and economically that's a disaster for livestock producers. We talk about summer heat coming and actually helping out the markets. You know, it's a true thing that we think about, that if everyone else's pigs slow down, it, so there's a component of the market out there, right, that the weather actually does kind of control it a little bit. And maybe we can beat it somehow. The processing plants become flooded with animals. <laughs> If they don't have the feed, they have to sell them. But you can't sell them into abattoirs if the abattoirs are already full. So you get a build-up of animals and um, the cost of feeding them becomes very high. So that's how it impacts through the supply chain. And um, farmers actually end up losing money and in the end some of them have started to lose their breeding stock as well as their productive animals. Climate change can result in farm-specific impacts along with regional, national and global impacts. 
Impacts such as heat stress, drought, or flooding are easy to identify. Other impacts such as manure management, labor, pests, roads, and bridges are site-specific or species-specific. Key is to pay attention to the little things and use a systematic approach to identify these vulnerabilities. A systematic audit will include a listing of the site-specific weather trends, annual and seasonal, followed by the impact these weather trends might have on the farm operation. Some might like to organize this information in a table format. When doing this, try to list as much detail about the potential impacts, including economics, as possible. This more detailed information is useful when planning responses to protect from or decrease the risk of these impacts. Bottom line, climate impacts on agriculture are nothing new. The difference now is that there are some real trends in climate and weather that must be considered in both short and long-term farm planning.